Hello, hello, my friends, my family, my community, my tribe. Welcome to the Hippie Moms Podcast. Oh, yes, you're here again. Oh, my gosh. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to the Hippie Moms Podcast in this little corner of the universe where I, your host, Becky Wells, gets to... I get to share what I love to geek out about, and that is all things holistic living. Um, And food's a big part of that. And I am going to wrap up my series on gut health. Uh, Really, I wanted to do this series because I want to have a resource for my future um, clients and people that I get to work with so that they get to come here and listen to this information so that they get to really start to soak this in on a cellular level. Um, And if you're just here listening, I'm so glad. I'm so happy because that means that I also get to help you understand the importance of gut health. Maybe you already know. Maybe you already know and you just need to be reminded or you just need to, um, you know, a couple tips here and there to implement in your life. I am so happy to provide that to you. Um, Or maybe you're just really new to gut health or maybe you're right in the middle and it doesn't matter. Wherever you are, I want you to know is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Because we have to always look that, look at where we are so that we can start. Um, from where we are now, because now, did you know, now is the only time we ever have, right? The past is gone and was once a now. Um, Everything that we've created was always a now and the future will always be a now. So let's live right here, right now and change our health together, okay? So we're going to talk about gut health. This is the last um, podcast, at least for now, that I'm going to go into talking about gut health and wrapping up this series. So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to go going to go through uh, a couple more things um, that we're going to talk about four major sources of environmental toxins. So we kind of went over this already of what other impacts um, are outside of what we actually put in our body um, that have an impact on our gut health. So we're going to kind of go over what's in your home, what can you control, and then we're going to really talk about how you nourish and some simple steps that you can take and guide guidelines that you can follow to um, really get on your path to gut health. Here's here's what I want, here's what I hope will happen. <clears throat> How I've set this up and what I want this aha moment to come, and maybe I have to just be obvious about it, or maybe you're going to get it by yourself, but I don't want you to miss this. The thing is, is that our whole life impacts our gut health. Our whole life. And even though that seems really overwhelming, and what I've learned is when you feel overwhelmed, let me tell you, the first thing that you can do to kind of decrease the overwhelm um, is to take action. It is. It really is. Um, I'm going to give you an example. I'm creating the Holistic Mama Summit. It's going to be um, going live uh, February 17th. It's a free online event. Um, I'm going to talk a lot more about that in upcoming podcasts. But let me tell you, I am interviewing over 30, about hopefully 33 speakers. That's my magic number. <clears throat> and I'm doing all the tech, <clears throat> video editing, um, and everything in between, the marketing, the email series, the uh, all the videos. Like it's incredible the amount of work that I'm doing. <clears throat> and I find myself at times getting so overwhelmed. I mean, just like, what the freak am I doing? I'm like insane. And I look at where I want to go and I look at the finished product and it's like this. This is what I want you to view. I want you to view that you are, you're going on a hike, okay? And you look up and you see this huge mountain. And every time you look at the mountain, you're just like so overwhelmed. You're like, ugh, I'm never going to get there. That's where I want to go. That mountain right there, that's the top I want to get to. And oh my gosh, I have to climb all the way up there? No, 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 sister. Stop looking at the damn mountain, Okay. Look ahead of you. Start taking steps forward. Start taking steps forward. All it does is take a baby step, that forward, towards the mountain, towards the mountain. Keep going. Now, every once in a while, you're going to have to look up, and you're going to have to make sure that you are headed in the right direction, right? That you stay on the path. But overall, you just got to take the step forward. And so those steps, and what, I, what I'm trying to co- kind of bring this in into my experience in the summit, is I just need to take the next step. I just need to take action. And that's what you're going to do. 
That's what you're going to do. You're on your health journey. You know where you want to go. You see your optimal self. You see how awesome you already are and how more awesome you're going to be and how much more energy you're going to have, more vitality. You're going to be in better moods. You're going to feel more patient. You're going to feel like you don't want to strangle your children. And yes, that's totally normal. I want you to know that it's totally normal if you feel like you just want to, um, you know, just do something that you of course wouldn't do, but it's okay if you have the thought because all of us do, right? But what we want to do is we want to get ourselves into a position of power. And we do that by caring for ourselves, self-care, loving ourselves, taking care of us so that we can show up and be who we are meant to be. And then what's beautiful about that is that we set the examples for our kids. Because let me tell you, our kids, they don't do what we say. They do what we do. We are living, breathing examples for our children. And so when we show them, we t- mama takes care of herself. Mama feeds herself health, you know, healthy foods. She exercises and moves her body. She drinks water. She eats her fruits and vegetables. You know, she drinks clean water and enough water. And you know where I'm going with this. Then they know that's their home. That's their home base. Something that they're always going to come back to because that's what's comfortable. That's what's sacred. And so we set the stage as moms. And that's why I don't, I really like to work with moms because when the mother changes, she changes the family. She truly does. Okay. All right, so let's get into it. So if you're already feeling overwhelmed, I want you to just take action. And maybe that's just waking up and drinking water in the morning, right? Or doing some of these steps. I've given you so many options, so many things that you can do. Um, And if you're really, really ready um, and really ready to like take action, then you need to come and do my 14-day gut healing cleanse. You just need to do it, okay? It's amazing. Everything's laid out. You have videos, resources, all the amazing stuff that you need. Um, and you get direct access with me, which is so fun. We get to conversate and I get to help you in your journey. Okay. So the things that, the things that we're going to kind of focus on right now is we are going to focus the four main areas, which we can take action on. We have control over food, our water, our beauty and personal care products and our household cleaning products. Okay. So we're going to start with food. We're going to dive into this a little bit more. Um, and I talked a lot about this in a previous podcast in the beginning, kind of really going through um, the chemicals in our food and how to um, really get the crap out of our food so that we can truly start to nourish our bodies and give our bodies like information that it actually needs. Um, so I'm just going to kind of briefly go over this. Now, there are over 10,000 chemicals in our food. Only 1% have been tested for actual human safety, okay? Um, and the thing is, is there is this um, this idea, and it is called synergistic toxicity. And what, the, what this is, is this is how chemicals put together create a whole synergistic toxic um, reaction in our body. So even though these chemicals, these 1% that have been tested – um, for human safety, they've never been tested with all these other chemicals. So the thing is, is that you put all these different chemicals together to create flavor, color, preservatives, you know, you can find them in packages and in the processing of the foods. And so this is why I'm like, just eat real food. Um, I love Michael Pollan saying, if it's made in a plant, don't eat it. If it's made from a plant, eat it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you eight eight little um, things here about food and we've gone over this and and these are just kind of like the the main um, ideas and fundamentals okay buy organic products whenever you can number two follow the dirty dozen and the clean 15 lists okay those are so huge number three avoid gmos completely number four choose fresh foods over canned foods because so many canned foods are lined with bpa remember that's plastic um, or other chemicals literally leach into your food. And again, this is why I really um, recommend you to always, always, always um, never buy tomato or acidic products in canned because that really starts to break down the cans and the linings. Try to buy foods in glass containers rather than plastic. Use glass to store your food and eliminate plastic as much as you can. I think one of the most incredible um, investments I have ever made are just glass Tupperware. Oh my gosh, I love them. You reuse them, get ditch the plastic. and Stop heating your food in plastic containers. That plastic is constantly being broken down. It's being broken down in your dishwasher. It's been broken down as you heat it up in the microwave and it just gets into your food. Now you have microplastics. 
Don't stress about what you did in the past, okay? Remember, it's moving forward. What can we do right now? And of course, shop local. Go to www.localharvest.org and find a local farmer's market near you. And just avoid processed and packaged foods as much as possible. Now, I went over water. If you, if uh, water is essential, um, it's so, 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 so important that you drink clean, filtered water. And you can find, um, if you want to go, first, I use the Berkey. And if you go to my, uh, the hippiemoms.com forward slash resources, you can find a link to, it is an affiliate link, to Berkey. I love them. I always recommend them. So I'm like, I might as well have an affiliate with them because I'm always uh, recommending them to my clients. I love them. And it's great because it's portable. I take it anywhere that I go. If I'm traveling for a weekend, my Berkey goes with me because I will always have clean water and I don't like to buy water in plastic um, containers. But anyway, <clears throat> a previous podcast, check it out. Um, it's early on in the podcast and you'll be able to check that out about all about water and how to source clean water. So I go into that into the depth. So I'm going to spare you right now. The next is the household cleaning products. This is so big. Oh, there goes Dallas. Hold on. Household cleaning products. Um, this is another huge source of toxins and this is the thing, we're like literally cleaning our homes with things that are extremely and potentially dangerous to our health. I mean, we inhale them into our lungs and our bodies really struggle from detoxifying them um, day in and day out. So this is why it's vital for you to start cleaning out your household cleaning products, you know, at your surface cleaners, your window cleaners, your laundry detergent, all the things. And if you're already overwhelmed, remember, we take action. Just pick one thing. Pick one thing. Um, and, um, you know, I can help you more with this. I know I need to do a whole uh, podcast on household cleaners. Um, but one of the things you can do is you can um, go to the EWG website. And what's so great about this is you go to this website, www.ewg.com forward slash skin deep. And what you can do is you can start putting in the products that you use and start to look at the scale because it will tell you how toxic your current cleaning supplies are and whether or not you need to switch them out. So research them, rate them, and then determine if you need to replace them, right? Research them, rate them, replace them, okay? Um, the next thing um, I want to just talk about, now all this is related to gut health because remember, anything that we breathe in, anything we're putting on our body, it's going into our bloodstream. It directly um, impacts our microbiome. Now, one of the things is beauty and personal products. And this is insane. Um, the European Union has banned over 1,300 chemicals found in cosmetics cosmetics, the FDA, right? That entity that we believe that might be taking care of us has only banned eight and restricted three. Um, and this is really scary because we as women use so much beauty and personal hair products from shampoo, hairspray, blush, foundation, deodorant, body lotion, you know, perfume, nail, um, nail polish and lipstick and eyeshadow. Um, I mean, it's crazy because it's terrifying that these chemicals found in these products are linked to cancer, reproductive harm, and neurotoxicity, and they negatively affect our gut. Um, and the thing is, women, we put on over 515 chemicals on our body every day. Is that insane? Um, so again, go to the EWG website. So in the household cleaners, just go to the EWG website. Now for beauty and personal care products, we go to www.ewg.com forward slash skin deep. Okay. I'm going to put these links on the show notes. So don't worry. Um, if you're already confused, I've confused you. I'm really good at that. Um, so that you can search all the products you currently use and look for the rating. Zero and one is the best. 10 is the worst. So start to look at what your products rate and start getting better products. Okay. Um, if your products are not listed, what you can do is you can search for the ingredients. So start reading the ingredients, um, in the products you use, and then you can figure out the rating. So I just individually go in if I don't know what an ingredient is and some ingredient that, you know, you don't even know what it is might be a zero or a one. It might be very low toxicity, but other ones can be tens. And those are the, what we want to stay away from. Again, get rid of all fragrance, perfume, 
Anything that has fragrance or perfume in it, get rid of it, okay? And then um, start just looking for better better ones. And here's the thing. Get into our Hippie Moms page, um, our community. I'm going to put a link to that. It's a Facebook group with um, over 4,000 moms. And this is what we talk about. So this is what's great is you can go in and be like, hey, what do you guys use for this? Or what do you use for this? And you can get so many different options. And then you can make an informed decision, okay? All right. Um, so those are the things that I really want you to think about. Okay. What is the food that I'm eating? The water I'm drinking? What am I putting on and around my body? And what am I cleaning my house with? Okay. Those are some things that you have control over that you can start to shift and change. Now I didn't do this right away. I didn't change my whole, all the products, you know, in, in, in a week. All right, this this happened over months and years. And so what's going to happen is you're going to try new things. But the point is, is that you're making steps to make your home less toxic. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go into the nitty gritty. And this is, this is what um, I really want to talk about. We're going to really dive into food. And this is what I really focus on in my program. Of course, I give you all this great information. I mean, we need to move our body. We need to uh, manage our stress, you know, the, all the things. Um, but I really love to focus on food because you are ingesting this food and this food is literally becoming you. And if you listen to my last podcast about digestion, you already have some really simple and free tactics to use um, around mealtime that can really elevate your digestive health and microbiome, okay? So um, we're going to talk about nourishing our body, and this is what I love, nourishing our body for gut health. Now, um, I'm going to kind of go through um, kind of the categories. Um, I'm not going to list everything because who wants to listen to that? But I'm going to kind of go through the, um, let's see, there's two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, nine categories that I want to I want to kind of go over. The first one is fresh fruits and veggies. I mean, think plants. This is what I recommend. Your cart should have 75% of its real estate should be fruits and veggies. All right? We need those phytonutrients, those antioxidants, these minerals and vitamins that are packaged so beautifully by Mother Nature in its bounty, okay? So eat fruits and veggies, herbs and spices, which are also plants, uh, like cilantro and parsley, basil. Think about adding herbs and spices as much as you can to your meals because these are nutrient powerhouses, healthy fats and oils. I'm going to do a whole podcast on healthy fats and oils. Um, But just to give you an idea, you want to cook with high smoke point. So that basically means oils that can, you can heat up high without it turning rancid or losing the quality of its fat. So this is like avocado, grass-fed ghee, um, and coconut oil. Okay. And then what you want to use raw, these are oils that you don't want to cook at very high temperatures and that's extra virgin olive oil, um, organic and unrefined sesame flax, hemp oils, organic tahini, um, flax and, oh, I said in hemp oils already. And then also, um, grass fed butter. Oh my gosh. And let me tell you about healthy fats. Not only do we need them to make every single cell in our body, but they make food taste good. I mean, Mother Nature knows what she's doing, you guys. So if we just start to get back, we're going to love the food we eat because it's truly delicious. Um, clean meats. This is a big one. I think this is another another podcast um, topic that we can really dive into is clean meats. And I'm talking grass-fed beef, grass-fed lamb, pasture-raised pork and chicken, bison, elk, venison. And with eggs, you always want pasture-raised and or organic, okay? Local or even best. Fish. Fish, 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 fish is so good, but because our oceans are slowly being, I mean, they're really polluted, you guys, we really want to focus on uh, smaller fish, Uh, wild Alaskan salmon, anchovies, tilapia, sardines, oysters, shrimp from the Gulf of Mexico, clams, um, and and the such. So um, in my course, we kind of go over what's the highest toxicity of fish, what's the lowest toxicity, because fish is really good. It has all those omega-3s that our body needs, our brain needs. Um, then, okay, now we're going to talk about fermented foods. Fermented foods, um, we have been eating fermented foods for uh, tens of thousands of years. And it's really important. 
important to know that fermented foods, what's beautiful about it is they, the nutrients in what is fermented actually multiplies and is elevated. And then you get tons of probiotics and enzymes and all these incredible nutrients that are in if fermented foods, like fermented cabbage is even more healthy than regular cabbage. So I'm talking kimchi and pickles and miso and sauerkraut, you know, pickled carrots and beets and ginger and we need to do a whole fermented class and podcast but I'm going to get someone amazing on here. Yogurts. These are so good for your body. I make sure I have at least two to three servings of fermented foods every day. Um, And then how you actually eat your legumes and grains really matters. You want to sprout or soak your legumes like peas, peas and lentils and black beans or grains like rice and buckwheat and millet. And here's the thing, um, and I go more over this in the course, but you want to make sure that you soak your beans, your grains um, overnight and for a a minimum of eight hours. And then you can cook them. They're actually going to break down uh, the anti-nutrients in them that aren't necessarily great for the body and they make them more bioavailable, which is so great. Um, And then beverages, right? So beverages that are really good for us, of course, water, 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 herbal teas, organic like green tea. Um, If you drink coffee, I love organic coffee. I highly recommend Bulletproof or Purity Organics. They actually test for molds. Coffee can have mold in it um, because of the, a lot of the beans are actually created in high humidity places. They put them in vats and mold uh, basically starts to grow. So what I recommend is always going through a company that tests for mold. And that's why I love Bulletproof. That's actually what I, what I use for my coffee. And I love kombucha. Oh my gosh. Kombucha is delicious. Um, I'm working on doing my homemade batch here. So I'll let you know how that goes. But kombucha is great, but you got to make sure there's no added sugar. GT's is a great brand. You can find it almost anywhere, but make sure you look on the label because GT's can have as much sugar as a Coke, as a soda. So make sure you look that there's no added sugars. I like Ginger Aid, the original trilogy. Um, and, um, what's the other one? Ginger Aid, uh, the lemonade one too. Um, they don't do any added sugar. Now there's going to be sugar in the fermentation process, but you don't need to add sugar back into it because it's already sweet. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to talk about the top gut healing foods. Okay. These are the foods that uh, we include in my program. And I'm just going to give you a a little snapshot into what it is uh, because these are foods that are so, so good for your gut. Number one, are you ready for this? Bone broth. Bone broth is amazing. Make your own. You can go to my blog. I have my I have a, a video and show you how to make bone broth. It's so simple. It's so delicious. And what's awesome is you don't you can use it in soups and stews. I use it to cook my grains, my rice, my quinoa, my buckwheat. I use it to cook lentils. And what's awesome is that when you cook it in rice, for example, it uh, the rice absorbs all those beautiful nutrients. So not only are you eating this, you know, yummy rice, who doesn't like that, but you are uh, getting all the nutrients from the bone broth. Boom, double whammy. There you go. Raw, raw cultured dairy. So this is kefir and yogurt. So this is, I highly recommend always getting dairy. Here's a couple things from dairy. Always get it from pasture raised and grass fed cows and our goats. Okay. Super important. Um, and listen, I like dairy. I know there's a huge anti-dairy movement going on. What I don't like about dairy is the conventional dairy. Conventional dairy is pumped with hormones, antibiotics, and it's heated, pasteurized. So all the enzymes that break down, like for example, lactose is killed. So what's beautiful is in raw dairy products, you still have the enzymes. And so your body is able to uh, break it down and utilize the nutrients. Okay, so super important, raw cultured dairy. The next thing, of course, we talked about fermented foods, healthy fats like coconut oil and MCT oil are so good for our gut health. Uh, Omega-3s, we talked about that. You can find that in, remember, safe fish and grass-fed beef. Lots of fiber. This is why I'm like, you've got to eat fruits and veggies because fiber, you guys, fiber is what feeds our good gut bugs. They need fiber. And I'm going to tell you a little tip here that um, I also share. I have so many tips in my program, but I'm going to give you one of them. Um, One of them is um, 
resistant starch. So this is a type of fiber that is that is not broken down in the intestine. It goes into the colon and feeds all those good bacteria. It keeps your colon healthy. And what you can do is if you have potatoes, white potatoes or rice, what you do is you cook them, you heat them, right? You cook them to when you, as you know, when they're like the rice is cooked, it's fluffy or the potatoes are done, then you cool them. Cool them completely and then you either reheat or eat cold that it turns into resistant starch. So instead of having this blood, you know, sugar spike from sh- um, from rice and potatoes, you actually they turn into resistant starch. It's magical. So cool those the rice and the potatoes and reheat. That's one thing I always do is I make tons of potatoes if I'm having them for dinner, always cool them down, I reheat them for breakfast, okay? So you can still eat them right after you heat them. I'm just saying it's going to be a, more beneficial for your gut if you cool them and reheat or eat them cold. Um, of course, plenty of fruits and vegetables. And then the magic collagen and gelatin. So this is why bone broth is so incredible is because it, it has collagen and gelatin and all of these incredible amino um, acids and proteins that your body really needs uh, to, to seal that gut. Remember, the zipper zips it up and it keeps it um keeps it healthy. Um, and so collagen's a big one. I love grass, um, let's see, what is it? Great Lakes grass-fed collagen. That's one that I use. I like the taste. Vital Proteins is great. Um, I have a wonderful um, homemade jello recipe on my blog. I make sure I need to put that down here. I'll make sure I give you that. It is so good. My kids love it. It's so simple. The ingredients are, I usually take like watermelon or any berries that are berries or fruit, um, sometimes grapes and strawberries or raspberries, just depending on what's in season. And I just put it in a blender and I mix it with a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice to give you that sourness. Put it in a saucepan, mix it up, put a little bit of honey or maple syrup, like some sort of natural, um, you know, better sugar or sweetener. And then I put gelatin in it. It. And it just makes this beautiful jello that I love to eat. Now, I also make this for my gut cleanse. I just don't add the sugar at all. But the fruit's great. And the gelatin is amazing. And it's such a great snack. So any way I can get, you know, yummy, um, really good gut healing foods into my kids, I'll do that. And jello is like one of those ways. My kids love they love to eat um, broth. You know, it, it's taken some time to get there, you guys. You just have to expose them to it. So we need to do a whole podcast on kids and foods, okay? All right. So um, uh, let's see. I have top gut healing foods, and those kind of go through the categories that we just did. But to save you all time, I'm just not going to go through those all. Now we're going to talk about therapeutic foods for digestions. I have a lot of these in my in my in my course and my program, um, but I'm not going to go through all of them. But I'm going to talk about some of them. Okay. Um, so one of them is apple cider vinegar. So again, I mentioned this in the last um, podcast that you can take apple cider vinegar before a meal, and that helps stimulate your stomach acid, which is very very, very important for digestion. Remember, stomach acid is our friend. It's not our enemy. All right. Um, this high acid content helps digest proteins in the stomach by lowering the stomach pH. And lowering means to bring it more acidic. And so this is what's really important. Uh, protein does require a lot of acid um, to break it down. So ACV can help. Beets. Oh my gosh. If you're going to eat one vegetable that has... I, okay, so let me just... Um, so in my nutritional therapy practitioner designation in the, in the course that I did, um, one of the we got this huge book. It's called Signs and symptoms and you really I, I use it for my clients that are having these these symptoms and things and it goes through what you need to do what you need to look at it's really amazing because really remember symptoms are messengers from the body they're just telling you like hey pay attention right and then eventually they're like hey pay attention sorry I didn't want to blow your ears out but that's kind of what happens um and when we get into that chronic disease disease and diabetes that's your body screaming at you and so one of the things um, that I notice in the signer symptoms is that beets are incredible. They're high levels of folate and manganese, and they support a gall- gallbladder function, which is really important part of digestion. So beets, red beets. I have a beautiful beet salad. I need to put that. I'll put the beet salad recipe. It's my favorite. My husband loves it. It's beets and apples and fennel. And it's just, I put it in my Cuisinart and I shred it up. And then I put a flaxseed oil, which is so good for you, um, a high quality cold press organic flaxseed oil, and then lemon juice, salt and pepper. 
oh my God. And it stays good for a couple days. It's really good to eat before a meal because it then, again, stimulates the, that uh, stomach acid. All right. The next thing is garlic. Love garlic. Love, love, love garlic. I mean, honestly, I, I don't think I could live without garlic or onions. Uh, that's pretty much what I put into almost every single meal. Um, and so this contains something called allicin, which is, it sounds like the name of a girl, but it's actually antiparasitic. And it is so good for our gut bugs. Our gut bugs love garlic. Um, I mentioned fennel. So this is an excellent source of vitamin C, potassium, fiber, trace minerals. It has an anti-cancer compound. Um, it's also an intestinal intestinal anti um uh, anti like spasm so it's really really soothing for the stomach uh fennel seeds are delicious so just get fennel and one of the things that i always recommend in my course is find a new vegetable find something that you've never eaten before because we need to always be eating different things our body requires variety if we always eating the same thing guess what our body becomes intolerant of it i gave an example earlier how i was eating avocados day in and day out and guess what I became allergic to avocados. So it's really, really important to always mix up what you eat. Um, Ginger, oh my gosh, ginger is incredible. Lemons, um, of course, bone broth and uh, okra, which I'm so, okra is usually in season in the fall. I love okra. So if this just inspires you to, I have so many other uh, therapeutic foods for digestion, but those are some of my top favorite ones. So even if I inspire you to go eat a new vegetable, ah, that makes me so excited, okay? Um, we've gone through the, the, the fermented foods. Um, and so now I'm going to, um, leave it at this. Okay. Fiber. Okay. We're going to really talk, dive into fiber just for a moment. Cause if you're going to get anything out of this podcast, one, right. We, we already talked about, it's so important. The food that we eat, we've gone through that, you know, we need to clean up our food. We need to give our body the nutrients, the minerals, the building blocks it needs to create the body that we want to live in. Right. And the beauty products we use, the water we drink, the household products, okay? We're going to be eating fermented foods and clean meats and, you know, things that our body recognizes and knows how to digest. Now, I really want to talk about fiber and this is where we're going to, uh, this is where we're going to end up. Now, here's the thing. Check this out. Our ancestors ate up to 150 grams of fiber per day. Today, We are lucky to consume 10% of that or 15 grams daily. And here's the thing. Fiber has this imperative role on our body and digestive health. And um, what I really hope you take away is that it's vital to our overall health and wellness. We must need fiber, okay? So um, in a 2017 study, check this out, found that the importance of fiber is intimately tied with the importance of our gut microbes. Here we are. Remember, our our gut microbes are friends. They're healthy, we're healthy. And a proper diet, um, a fiber, a proper fiber literally feeds and makes these bacteria thrive. Okay. And what happens is while they, while these are eating the fiber, they're producing all of these incredible nutrients. All right. Anti-aging nutrients, things that give us energy. And, um, also it produces the mucus and this mucus barrier lowers inflammation in our body. And it actually helps the bacteria aid in digestion. So it's this dual benefit. We feed these good gut bugs. These good gut bugs create lower inflammation and create these incredible nutrients in our body that keep us young. I'm sorry. What woman doesn't want to stay young? What person doesn't want to stay young, right? And this is the thing. When we eat fiber, fiber is anti-aging. You don't need, uh, you know, expensive anti-aging potions and and these, um, you know, products. You just need to eat fiber. <laughs> so basically... As you know, fiber feeds our good gut bugs. And the smaller amount of fiber we eat, the less food our microbiome has to nourish itself, okay? The more fiber we eat, the more nourished our microbiome will be. So eating fiber is key to keeping our guts healthy and in optimal function. Um, and so this is like, here. now here are my six tips on getting more fiber in your diet. You ready for this? Okay, include veggies in every meal, okay? Super important. Snack on berries and fruit, right between meals so if you're if you're gonna have a snack eat something with fiber all right because that's gonna not only does fiber make you feel fuller but again it's feeding our good gut bugs 
Top dishes, like this one thing I love to do is top dishes with seeds like flax, chia, or hemp seeds. One thing I always do with my kids is on their sourdough waffles or sourdough pancakes or if I'm making them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes, my kids eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I will put hemp, chia, and flax seed meal in their sandwich. They can't taste it, but you know what? They're getting more fiber and moms love that. We got to get our, our kids to eat fiber. You can also put, you know, flax, chia, and hemp seeds on a salad. Now I'm going to give you a quick tip on flax seeds, okay? Do not buy already um, ground flash flax seeds, okay? And here's why. Because when you ground flax seeds up, they oxidize. The fat oxidizes. So what you want to do is either put the, put the flax seeds into your smoothie where it grounds it up, or you can use your coffee grinder and grind it up and then put the flax uh, meal on, freshly ground flax meal on your meal, um, whatever you're eating. So I do it on salads. I do it on my yogurt with my fruit and berries in the morning and my raw almonds. Um, um, yeah. So I think that's really some good tips there, right? Okay. And then add avocados to your meals. Remember, don't eat avocados every day, um, but avocados have fat fiber and protein so that's kind of a good source and it's and they keep you satiated when you eat fat fiber and protein together you're going to feel satiated longer leave the peels on the skin of apples cucumbers and sweet potatoes so the skins and this is why we buy organic because the skins we we don't want them to have tons of pesticides fungicides and herbicides on them right no thanks don't need those so make sure you buy organic or buy local um, and then eat properly prepared legumes beans lentils and peas remember we talked about that remember to soak um, I go over a lot more of that all of this in my in my 14 day gut healing cleanse but here's the thing what we can do is what we can do now <laughs> you know what I mean it's like we don't have to make these huge changes all I'm asking and and my advice to you is just start somewhere right clean up clean up the veggies you eat by doing by by buying the clean 15 and the in the dirty dozen you know follow those lists um, just try and find a new vegetable to cook or to include in your meal. Start making little shifts. And here's the thing, the beautiful, this is, this is kind of my saying, it's addition by subtraction, okay? Or subtraction by addition. Let's do that. Subtraction by addition. You subtract the things that don't serve you by adding the things that do. Because when you start to do things that really work for you and that are good for you, all the other things fall away because you don't have space for them anymore. So just start slow start somewhere and I am just so thrilled that you listened to this if you're already listening thank you I hope you picked up some good tips I love sharing all this stuff um, and I highly recommend if you're really ready to take it to the next level let's do the cleanse um, I'm gonna be starting a group cleanse in January uh, we do them every couple months as a team um, and it's awesome this is my second week on the cleanse again I really want to amp up before the holidays and become clear and I've got a lot of work to do so I always function better when I'm clear and energetic and this cleanse does that for me so um, and a lot of my clients it's one thing I hear the most is that clarity and energy go through the roof and I think that's awesome so um, and that's not it's not due to me right if this is mother nature we're just following mother nature's rules for humanity that's all we're doing we're getting back to nature so get back to nature take baby steps follow your heart and thank you for being with me today. I love you all so much and I can't wait to connect with you on the next Hippie Moms podcast. Bye.